much of this show's success is owed to the opening theme. Every time I hear bum 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 I just can't help but get excited. Unfortunately, this uplifting experience just makes it all the worse every time this season disappoints me. So, yes, I'm giving the theme a sin for being too good. The show cuts from several seconds of Varys thinking unspoken thoughts to several seconds of Tyrion thinking unspoken thoughts, and here are my unspoken thoughts on the pacing of this final season. They say every time a Targaryen is born, the gods toss a coin and the world holds its breath. Not much for riddles where I'm from. This isn't a riddle. A metaphor or analogy maybe, but pretty straightforward and definitely not a riddle. Riddles have answers that require a paradigm shift and have answers like, he was short and carried an umbrella, the record skipped and he knew he was caught, or the horse's name was Sunday. You're welcome. I still don't know how her coin has landed, but I'm quite certain about yours. Being certain about other people's coins? I have known more kings and queens than any man living. I've heard what they say to crowds and seen what they do in the shadows. If Nandor the Relentless shows up right now and claims the throne, and then we cut to Colin Robinson talking Tyrion to death, I'll give back every single sin in the history of the channel. Your grace? 20 seconds of Tyrion entering this room. Someone has betrayed me. This scene about who betrayed who and what does and doesn't count as betrayal goes on for all the some time. So much so that this episode manages to feel rushed and incredibly slow at the same time. Because you told him. You learned from Sansa. And she learned from Jon. And the knee bone's connected to the thigh bone. This series of revelations is like the skeleton dance for Game of Thrones. And just as tediously droll. It doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter now. Cool! I love investing in things that don't matter. It's dark as f*** in this room, Varys. I'm not sure if you can see it hiding in the shadows, but I think I just found a rare undercandling sin. I mean, if you were hoping to burn that letter all the way, you maybe shouldn't have put that lid on so soon. That snuffs out the oxygen and stops the flame. If you want it to burn faster, throw some flour on it. Which I in no way learned recently when I mistakenly tried to put out a kitchen fire with it. 20 seconds of Varys walking to his execution without Hannah Waddingham in her shame bell. I hope I deserve this. Truly, I do. I hope I'm wrong. Goodbye, old friend. I know we aren't in the habit of taking sins off for this disastrous season, but Varys may be one of the most complex and interesting characters in the history of television and could only exist on a show like Thrones. Conlothil is amazing, and we have to pour one sin out for the incredible Varys. Forgetting to bring the hot dogs to the campfire cookout. This was all she brought with her when we crossed the narrow sea. Her only possession. I guess today is just a day to burn everything. I'm just glad this stops now before she burns our entire ability to relate to her as a character and undoes seven seasons of brilliant character development. 20 seconds of Grey Worm leaving the room, and John entering the room without Hannah Waddingham in her shame bell. Ten seconds of silence without Hannah Waddingham. Actually, it'd be weird if I brought the shame bell into this one. Far more people in Westeros love you than love me. And of course, John will now say he loves her, and then Danny will put him to the test with some incest a snogging. And she'll take this as a sign that she has to burn the entire city to the ground, as one does. You can't expect them to be heroes. They're hostages. Look, Tyrion's clearly right through most of this scene, and the way Daenerys ignores him is befuddling and frustrating. But to insinuate that hostages can't be heroes is to ignore history, human nature, and common sense. You might even argue that hostages have a better chance at being heroes because of the inherent risk in their situation. 20 seconds of Tyrion leaving this room. Your brother was stopped trying to get past our lines. Followed by another 10 seconds of Tyrion leaving the room. 20 seconds of people walking into King's Landing. And since I think you're starting to get the point, I'm just going to add 10 cents for all the unnecessary walking, standing, sitting, not talking, staring, glaring, caring, and brooding in this episode. 30 seconds of boating. Sorry, I didn't see that one coming. Despite what you've heard from Lonely Island, there really isn't anything exciting going on here. Where are you going? I'm going to kill Queen Cersei. She is not. This goes on for all these show has time for this somehow works time. To be honest, I never really cared much for them. Innocent or otherwise. Tyrion says you do care for one innocent, instead of saying, that seems dumb. The writers have shown you act selflessly multiple times throughout the show, so you saying this now, even insincerely, kind of undoes a good deal of your character development. Tomorrow. I suppose I'll die tomorrow, if not before. Why? The one-word question the scriptwriters of season 8 failed to ever ask somehow winds up in the script they wrote. Your queen will execute you for this. 
If Daenerys can make it to the throne without wading through a river of blood, maybe she'll show mercy to the person who made that possible. Stupid season eight Tyrion continues to be stupid. Thinking this discount stayed bonnet staring off into the distance would distract us from all the gratuitous boat and arrow porn. This entire city is now in panic mode in anticipation of an attack, but how do they even know it's coming today, at this moment? I'm sure there are plenty of ways the news could have made it to Cersei and then filter down to the common folk, but why is the show just assuming we'll fill in the gaps for it? Jamie does his best Assassin's Creed impression, but sadly this won't Altair my disdain for his arc in this season. Random soldier. Random soldier. Random soldier. Emotional investment? These two will now stand in for all the innocent lives about to be lost because this season needed one more thing to spend time on that wasn't the natural progression of the character arcs of the 317 main characters they were already failing. Okay, one more walking sin, but only because it goes on for so long that I'm pretty sure it's just there to pad the runtime. And Jamie's moving against traffic, which is like the most egregious thing a person could do in such a situation. Seeing all this dragon stuff from Euron's point of view was certainly cool, but this final reaction of casually jumping out of the way after almost being fire roasted is all the levels of I'm not surprised he survives this because it looks fake as shit. Fire! Being upset that you got the exact thing you just asked for. I simply refuse to believe that with all these soldiers standing here quietly to juice the maximum amount of tension out of this scene, not a single one of them heard anything beyond a slight rumble before the wrecking fireball Kool-Aid band its way through this wall. The entire Dothraki horde decided to let discount Matt Smith live so that we can get some Grey Worm vengeance. And I'm all for some Grey Worm vengeance, but the Dothraki don't strike me as being tuned into the ideas of narrative flourish while sporting full-on murder boners. All we need is one good shot. And in an attempt to make sure every last character is dumbed down to the intellectual level of a box of Valerian hammers, now Cersei will say dumb naive things that are supposed to stand in for character development. This guy in John's right dies because despite looking in that direction, John decides not to warn him of this singular soldier who is very obviously approaching them with a sword and some violent intentions. Also, the four soldiers who do attack Grey Worm, John, Davos, and a few hundred of their men do so with some red shirt levels of unfounded optimism. And now the chorus of people asking for the bells to be rung will begin, but once again, how do any of these people know about the bell plan? And so begins one of the stupidest and nonsensical character decisions in television history. Not only has the city surrendered, not only has Danny's entire thing been about freeing the innocent, and not only are there at least a half dozen other ways to get revenge on or kill Cersei without harming the innocent, this is the worst way to accomplish her overall goals. She's literally destroying her own ability to lead. This whole thing is so terrible, I'm giving the show a sin for every single innocent person she kills. And I'm counting them all. There's 37 there. Another 119 there. 78 more there. Another 249 while these idiots are turning to guffaw. 98 in this blast. Oh, I'm counting that one too. This whole battle's on her, so that's another 414. And while Grey Worm is going ham, she fried another 732 on the other side of town. Another 57 here, another 134 on this run, 69 here, <laughs> nice, 239 here, these guys, this guy, 175 more, plus 56. War Hero watches carnage and horrors play out in slow motion, cliche. Oh, that run she got 632. That's like a single fire breath record, mostly thanks to the orphanage. Seven people in here, plus three killed by the falling debris. And then another 4,872, while the rest of this episode quickly and unsatisfactorily wraps up a bunch of other storylines. If I win, I'll bring your head to Cersei so you can kiss her. One last time. Of all the dumb things for this dumb episode of this dumb season of this not dumb show to spend its dumb time on, we're going with Euron versus Jamie. The Unsullied have breached the gates of the Red Keep. And now a single tear will fall from Cersei's eye as if calling out for us to give a sh**. I'm the man who killed Jamie Lannister. I don't care! Sandor, thank you. I kind of dig that Arya lets go of revenge and lives another day, but honestly, her turn is just as unearned as Danny's. She's been a stone-cold assassin hellbent on her list, and all it takes is a five-second stern talking to to turn her around. This particular piece of architecture conveniently stops crumbling right before the destruction passes the part they're standing on. Hello, big brother. What I say every time my phone gives me an ad for something I had a conversation about earlier in the day somehow makes it into the script. Also, this whole show is people just conveniently show up in the same place when it's time to fight. Why should Clegane Bowl be any different? Daenerys was doing so well at destroying the castle that it's a bit odd that she's now just flying in circles overhead. Yeah, 
That's you. That's what you've always been. Brothers. And now Jamie and Cersei will have a single embrace as if calling out for us to give a sh**. We'll now cut in between the somewhat interesting Clegane match and the much more uninteresting part where Arya walks out of the city while feeling empathy towards random strangers. Cutting away from excitement to boredom? What do you think you are, a Star Wars show? Although the dragon part of the sequence with Arya trying to escape their wrath is pretty amazing. We thought these powerful beasts were cool and fantastic for several seasons now, but the perspective is much different when you're on the receiving end of the horrors that they're clearly capable of. That's right, I'm gonna have to give one more sin off to this series and everyone who worked on it for this cinematic roller coaster. As Greg and Sandy continue to fight, how is baby brother surviving any of this? No pain, no clegane, I guess. I know I'm supposed to be feeling poetic justice or some shit as they fall in slow motion, but if a knife to the head barely phased Gregor, why are we supposed to believe that this fall into the fire will do anything? You can't stay here. Yep, this is the same lady that Arya saw trying to get into the keep, and the same lady who helped her up in the street. Her name's Nora. That's right, she conveniently pops up so much that they named her in the subtitles. She accidentally leaves herself into this plot so much that if Arya's American history, Nora's freaking Forrest Gump. Stunt casting the Liberty Bell. The possible death of Arya has been teased so much in this one episode that her plot armor is beginning to rust from overuse. Jamie continues to not have bled out after all that stabbing, so I'm gonna have to continue sinning it. Nothing else matters. And now Jamie and Cersei will have a heartfelt conversation, as if calling out for us to give a skip. All I can think of as this ash rains down is that King's Landing has entered the Upside Down, and now I'm just mad Stranger Thrones doesn't exist. Looking a gift horse in its convenient mouth. What have I told you, Martha? You said it was safer than my I would never say it. Come on, let's bet. We're not much for riddles where I'm from. <laughs> there were three men in a boat with four cigarettes and no matches. How did they manage to smoke? It was me! Soldier! Pick me, pick me, pick me. Your Grace, the Iron Fleet is burning. The gates have been breached. We're fucked. And look at me. Look at me! I'm the captain now. I have the high ground! Brothers don't shake hands. Brothers got a hug. Look at me! Just look at me. I'm the captain now. <laughs> 